not bugging out yet, so that's that's good. How's it working for you? Looks good to me. I don't understand these percentages in the corner. You're seeing different things. Oh, I see an uploading thing. I don't know. Okay. Well, welcome back to Whatever. our newest series, our clinical wrap up at the end of the week, or I guess it's the beginning of the week since it's Sunday. But I'm um, just going to do this weekly and see what we can learn and how things are going in clinic. And just to give you guys some content that we think would be new, interesting, and unique. So, uh, Vince, where are you at for your rotation right now? Um, so I'm at Concentra. It's an outpatient musculoskeletal uh, rehab center. It's all work comp. So the industrial athlete, if you will, that's the, the model that we've been describing it as this whole first week. And it's been really interesting. And I mean, for first week, it definitely had a couple bumps in the road, which I'll get into a little bit later. But if you want to tell about your place that you're at, pretty cool place, yeah. right? It is pretty cool. Um, so Eli Lilly is a massive pharmaceutical company in Indianapolis. And so they house all of the medical offices that they need for their employees in-house. So that includes dentistry, uh, physician work. Um, I think they have a vision optometrist, but they also have physical therapy in-house. So ATI contracts with Eli Lilly and has, um, so there's three campuses. There's the main campus, the corporate center, which is amazingly gorgeous. Like, it's so nice that I don't feel like I should be in there when I walk in. It looks like the nicest Ritz hotel you've ever seen. Uh, and then there's two other camp campuses that satellite off of it. And so there's ATIs in all three. And so right now I'm with my CI, we do most of our work at the main campus. We'll pop over to the other campuses, just depending on patient load. Um, but it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we also see the industrial athlete, which is a term that I heard this week. Um, it's the new, new, what is it, latest and greatest term and mm -hmm. treatment big buzzword, populations. Big buzzword. Big buzzword. Um, but it is pretty cool. Uh, we work with pretty much college graduates up until retiree so our, it's like 22 years old to like 65 is our whole population which is really really cool um the way it's been described to me it's like we deal with a highly motivated highly educated population that really wants to work and improve uh and the cool thing is is there's some unique insurance situations where we don't have to deal with a lot of insurance crap for the most part we get our patients in and we just get to work and treat so there's not a lot of, mm. yeah, there's not a lot of behind the scenes stuff that's frustrating or inhibiting to rehabbing patients. Okay. That's pretty cool. That sounds, that sounds nice. <laughs> I think, I think for us, we have, it's definitely the balance game of dealing with insurance and making sure that we don't lose um, treatment with our patients before like discharge or anything or like make mm -hmm. sure we get a proper amount of sessions in it's i mean it's been one week and i've already come across that a couple times with my ci and discussing and he said it, it happens more often than you think you just hope that they're gonna be able to progress after they leave here which is an unfortunate reality with insurance and dealing with all that it's really frustrating so you have to get people out before they've met their goals or you would sometimes. Be... And then we have, we have positions in house and for the most part, they're pretty cool. I've only met one so far and there is a lot of interprofessional, interprofessional communication going on. So we're able to actually kind of voice our opinions on these patients prognosis and like pretty much tell them like, Hey, they're going to need more time with us. Just like, let's make sure we're all, we're all in, in line with that and agree with it. So it works out that way, but sometimes some patients either didn't show up and they kind of lose their sessions because of that. And like, they keep a very strict line with uh, meeting sessions and like giving them. Gotcha. 
Uh, that is one thing with our location is that we don't have great uh, data transfer with, and because our patients, so we're direct access and because I'm in Indiana, um, but it's a six week direct access. After that, you need a script. Um, okay. So we will get people in and we don't have great medical records. We have the classic medical questionnaire, but we're not getting a clear pre-eval history and we're definitely yeah. not getting a clear referral mm -hmm. if there was a referral to us so the there's a lot less prep that i have to be able to go into my evals which i haven't done one yet but my ci said she was going to stay with that off for the first week we'll do it yeah. this coming week she yeah, would be yeah. nice she's like yeah i wasn't going to throw you to the bulbs just set because it is a little different here um but yeah we don't have a lot of we have a, okay. this is the first time I'm working with a tech that is a, as an OSS tech. So actually does um, exercises with patients. Uh, we have PTAs and we have PTs, but there's a lot of delegation work that goes on. Um, Interesting. Yeah. For the most part, I haven't treated more than one patient uh, up until Friday where I was treating, or Thursday where I was treating two patients at once. Mm -hmm. Um so it's interesting to do that because that is not something I've done before. Okay. And what is, uh, what's your guys' patient model? Like, do you have 45 minute sessions? Do you overlap at all? A lot. So there's overlap there. We tell patients to plan for 45 minutes to 60. Um, mm -hmm. we also go off their schedule because some PT is better than no PT. Uh, yeah. For, for the most part, we're booking them for hour long sessions and there is overlap. And that's why they utilize text and PTAs a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll get a couple of patients that come in at, you know, say 11 o'clock. Uh, one will go one, one will come to the PT. Uh, so one's on the bike, one's with the tech, one's with the PT. If there's three, usually there's not more than two, but say there was. And I think there's maybe some. Um, trying to think of the word but uh it's not it's not like crazy busy or overwhelming okay. because we do really there's a the pts there do a really really good job of setting up expectations with their patients of saying like these are the things that we're doing like they know what the session is going to look like they know what the clinic's going to look like they're going to know there's other patients in there so it's all set up really well but it does we also haven't like had um a loss of touch with the patient Sure. There's still great rapport. You're still, they're still getting the rehab and their treatment, but there's also not this expectation that they're going to be handheld for every second of their treatment session until there's a specific point of that treatment session where this is like, Hey, we're hands-on, we're doing this, we're doing this. Gotcha. So a lot of patient education during those initial visits. So like, yeah, which is, is neat and unique to be able to do because that's not something I've had an opportunity to do before. Yeah, I can see that. I would say in contrary, my clinic doesn't run to that similar notion. We don't have any PTA mm -hmm. uh, in-house. And we have uh, anywhere from two patients an hour to four. So with the work comp, it's like purely metrics. And we really want to work on getting as many people in as possible. So I'm working eight to five and we have 30 minute overlaps. So if that makes any sense to you, basically we start at eight with either one or two patients if we're doubled up. And then mm -hmm. every 30 minutes, a new patient comes in and it's hour long session. Yeah. So it's kind of like this like staircase kind of treatment method where it's like we have 30 minutes of an initial like working with patient and then having them take charge and doing their own exercises a little bit less supervised than a standard outpatient uh, would do. And then mm -hmm. we're not, there's no direct access, even though being in Colorado, having that option, it's not available at this clinic because it is a corporate model and they run specifically with like work comp and partner with businesses. So it's like, exclusive i would say to like industrial workers yeah almost 
So it's like everyone there is like very acute. We don't see a lot of chron- like chronic, it seems. And then mm-hmm. if my CI does did mention that chronic does come in, but that's usually not what they got brought in for. But there's going to be a, definitely some tie in during the time with them to like address some chronic issues. So it's a whole thing. It's definitely different from everywhere I've been so far. So I'm interested to see what these next 12 weeks, well, 11 weeks, 11 weeks bring forth. 10 now. Is it 10? Well, it's 11 total, but we're already one weekend. Oh. Sure. Taking down. Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> um, so have you been able to do anything yet? Have you been brought oh. into the system? Yeah, we kind of talked about this the other day. My onboarding never got to, sent to me, so I kind of was in a bind the first, pretty much this whole first week, I should say. The first, like, up until Monday to Wednesday, I was not accessing any kind of computer system. I was just, like, looking over my CI shoulder, just trying to see how they do their EMR. And it's a concentric based EMR. They designed it, so it's, like, not really anywhere else, but it's kind of standard. There's like option for the soap note, a lot of click box. And so I was just like, I felt like a shadow for the first time in a long time. And <laughs> um, I didn't do much treating the first couple of days. And I did a little bit of hands-on stuff with my CI just cause he wanted to see my manual skills and stuff like that to like reassure himself, which I get. You got to make sure your student can actually like handle patients well and what better way than to check on yourself. Yeah. And so did some manual stuff with him the first couple of times, did some dry needling on him, which was fun because I feel like I don't get much time to do that. So I dry needle him, but for the sake of saying it, I can't dry needle consenter patients. So I have not done that. All right. For the legality, if this ever comes back to me. But that's been good. <laughs> I am not treating patients. No one's paying yes. me to treat them. I am not trying to treat patients. Um, but yeah. And then Thursday, I finally did some treating. Uh, I think I saw two patients and just did a standard uh, treatment session. I think it was one of them was an ACL and then an ankle. And then Friday, I did. I did three patients. And that was a little more handheld. My CI wanted me to follow what he had lined up for them. So a mm-hmm. little less opportunity to be creative, but at the same time, I I tweaked it to things I would suggest just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. So I was supposed to do an eval, an ankle eval yesterday. Not yesterday, Friday. But they didn't show up. So <laughs> classic. Classic. Didn't get to do it. So me and my CI just worked on like manual stuff, working on some manual skills, which is nice too. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. That's my first week in a nutshell. Pretty tamed, but I'm hoping to get all of that login information tomorrow. So fingers crossed that all works out. I'm able to access things. Nice. But yeah. So so I was apparently supposed to start on Tuesday, but I didn't know that. So I showed up on Monday and sat in the lobby for an yeah. hour because fear and anxiety that you've messed something up makes Naturally. you want to uh, freak out. And so I hung around and then eventually, so my CI was treating patients, obviously she wasn't answering her phone because that's a good PT. Mm-hmm. Um, but then afterwards she goes, oh, uh, yeah, so you I'm not there at that place today. I'm at one of the other other clinics on the other side of my campus. And they're all within like five minutes of each other. She yeah. goes, so uh, if you want to pop over, yeah, we'll get you set up. You can come hang around. Probably not have any treatments or anything like that, but we'll just get you in. Um, and then just kind of hit the floor running. Nice. Did end up treating, but not like, she's just like, hey, I have this exercise. You want to take them through it? Or like, hey, check out this like trigger point or whatever. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if my student treats you? And so just kind of like ramped up just like that. And so by the end of the day, like I was like, had a feel for the EMR, I was able to log in. Um, so they did have all my stuff in there, but I'm not badged. So I can't walk around because Eli Lilly is a massive pharmaceutical company, billions of dollars on the line. They're very, very, yep, yep, yep. very um, 
protective. And so I can't walk around without anyone. However, my background check, my screens are all finally done. I'm cleared to go. So hopefully on Monday, I'll be able to get a badge. I'll be able to walk around, get my free coffees and stuff Ooh. like that. But um, so that was day one. Day two uh, showed up, had my CR already had patients lined up for me. She's like, hey, these are the people. They're super, super nice. I'm going to just give you all the easy at bats um, just because they already know that you were coming. And so they're ready to roll with you. Um, so it's a couple easy, easy patients. And then uh, we'll progressively add more and more. And then by Friday, Thursday, um, she had it lined up where I was going to be doing my first double treat, like I was saying. Um, but saw some pretty cool cases. Got a, got a partial Achilles tendon rupture that's like four months out. So okay. in like the men protect phase, which yeah. is pretty cool. So now I get to do some more like return to work, return to sport type rehab. Okay. Um, actually, I'll, I'm doing a, a progress. So we'll see how far we've come. Mm -hmm. um, if we need to change goals, redirect and stuff. So that'll be really, really cool. So I get to like hop on that. And then a um, lot of cervicalgia. Um, we're going to see a lot of um, tendon. Yep. So a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Not a lot of... Um, manipulations out here i've noticed um yeah which i i don't even want to do anyway yet i want to kind of review those skills which is oh my gosh i'm having chest pains on the left side <laughs> um okay oh, that was, yeah i think I'm okay um but so then working on um some regional independent stuff because yeah there's a lot of headaches a lot of neck pain and stuff and it's postural so retraining thoracic mobility, thoracic control, shoulder blade control, scapular retraining, um, neck mobilization, uh, strengthening, just a lot of upper quarter um, and upper cervical, upper thoracic stuff, which is really, really interesting because I wanted to do that, yeah. but I just haven't felt like I've solidified my skills there. So I'm gonna have a lot of opportunities to do that. We'll have some LVP. Um, and then also uh, we get a lot of hand and wrist just from people being at the computers all the time. Mm -hmm. So should be able to fine tune some lateral epi lateral epicondalgia yeah. treatment um, and its relationship to hand, shoulder, and posture, which would be really cool. Yeah, I've also seen um, a lot of and, like hand and wrist stuff at my clinic, which is interesting. Yeah, but they're like everyone always does. Everyone always pushes when they fall, so it's like mm -hmm. outstretched everything, and that's what we're seeing. But yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, you're, you're good. You're good. Uh, so one of the cool things though with ATI is that they're doing uh, for students. Um, they do it regionally. There's four students currently in the ATIs in the Indianapolis area, and so every other Friday, uh, we do just like a skills education um, and region. Mm -hmm. So we did like three hours just going over uh, upper quarter screens and upper quarter treatment. Yeah. On Friday, so no no patients, just training. And just meeting other clinicians and other students in the air. So that was really, really fun. Yeah. Uh, we went over some TMJ stuff. Uh, I felt a lot better after that than I did, like, even with our lab and lecture um, on just getting, like, soft skills, easy introduction into it. Yeah. Like, it was like, take everything that we learned and just, like, all right, here's the nuts and bolts. Ding, 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 ding. That's all you got. That's all you need for now. It's entry level, right? That's the whole point we're training you for yeah. as students. Here is ding, 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 if you had to do that. If you had questions, you ask your PT right now. But, or, or someone who trained in that area or know where you refer to because that's all you'll have to do. So that was really, really cool. That's nice. Um, to do. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, so we did like a mini in-service on Friday at Concentra. And it was basically concussion and vestibular, which Ooh. it's interesting enough hearing what my CI and the other PTs had known. And the director is more more so the specialist, if you will, or I would say most knowledgeable in that regard, just because I took a couple courses and stuff like that and, and all that, just basically running us through best ways to treat people with concussions because apparently we see a lot of them. Granted, I bet that actually makes sense. Yeah, granted, in industrial field, if you're working and you fall, the, the odds of you hitting your head are pretty high. Mm -hmm. And then cascading into receiving a concussion 
pretty good. So culminating that and working with that, and I'm considering making that my in-service and just finding a way to better organize these buckets of like vestibular and concussion and visual impairment, seeing what's different between them. But that's a discussion I'm going to be having with my CI this week and deciding if this is like the rabbit hole I want to go down for my in-service, which is going to lead me into asking you about if you've talked about your in-service at all and if you know what you're doing. Um, I have some ideas. I kind of want to go over some treatment principles for, I was thinking vestibular because we see some unilateral hypofunction or we had two unilateral hypofunction cases yeah. um, this week. And so, but we're probably de-seeing one because it really progressed. The other one's just new eval. So I don't know how much I want to focus on that, but no, I have not discussed. Um, basically, my CI, me and my CI are like, yeah, we have to do an, you get a new in-surface at this point. And that's the whole conversation that we've had. Yeah, I acknowledge that. Far <clears throat> Oh yeah, that exists. That's a thing you gotta do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that's kind of been our discussion too. First day we like he took me he bought me lunch. It was sweet. I love that. So nice. but during lunch we just pretty much discussed what this rotation will look like, which I'm excited for and I'm looking forward to presenting helpful knowledge to this clinic, hopefully. And hopefully they find it helpful. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what actually comes of it and seeing if I end up doing that. Because if not, it's just going to be maybe something a little more simple or more ortho related because half of our patient population is coming in for like a ortho issue, an acute ortho issue. So mm -hmm. we'll see what this week brings for all that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think so. I'll try and chop this up and have it posted to all you guys by tomorrow, probably sometimes in the day if I can finish it tonight, but we'll see. Probably not. Maybe I'll work on it tomorrow and have it out by tomorrow night. Um, going forward with our clinical weekly wrap up, how do you feel about just like grabbing a couple cases that we worked on or focused on that we thought were interesting, unique? Yeah. Um, things that remind of us are certain treatment principles and like we just present on like three or four of our patients or sessions or whatever and kind of use that as like, so we have like six to eight different topics to go through and that. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. Create some more room for discussion. I mean, first week, we're not going to see mm -hmm. a lot. I think as we move forward, yeah. we're going to be seeing a lot more and have a lot more caseload to actually talk mm -hmm. about. I feel like this first week is just basically navigating our new clinic, figuring out what all of that is mm -hmm. going to look like for moving forward. Yeah. But love yeah. that idea. And it'll be nice because we'll get to have a discussion with each other and see what maybe what parts we're not thinking about or not considering or haven't discussed with our CIs mm -hmm. yet. So you guys get to see the process. Anyone who's watching or listening, you get to hear or see the process of figuring out how to best treat our patients and watch our learning process too. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you all for tuning in and giving us a listen. Uh, please like and subscribe, share the messages, share our videos. If you haven't seen the other ones, watch those too. I think they'd be really helpful for you. <laughs> Beautiful. Later, y'all. All right. We'll see ya.